Hey, how's everybody doing? Mike here at the Limo Garage, and today we're going to be replacing the drive shaft coupler on a Chrysler 300. And don't mind the sweat. We are in Florida, and you guys up north are probably enjoying some cool weather right now, but not here. We're still sweating like pigs. So let's get this started. This is the infamous drive shaft coupler that likes to go bad on the Chrysler 300s and the Dodge Chargers. This you're going to find in the same vehicle from, I want to say, 2003 to 2011 or 10. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. But the vehicle we're doing today is a 2008. You can pick this part up from any parts store. The doorman makes it now. You don't have to go straight to the dealer. I think I paid like 80 bucks for it. So all, everything you're going to need to change this, this part, at least on the vehicle we're working on today, you're going to have to get one of these big heavy-duty impact torque bits to get the end of that drive shaft off. And the size on this, this is a T60. So make sure you grab yourself a T60 before you go trying to tackle this job. I like using air tools. Got my 18 millimeter wrench, that's gonna be for the other side of the nuts. And make sure you get yourself a good chalk marker so you can mark the drive shaft so it goes back the same place. Good pry bar. All right, so I've got our Chrysler 300 up in the air over here. And it's funny because every time I post something like this where I've got pictures of these cars jacked up, everybody freaks out. Oh my God, you can't do that to a limo. You'll break the windows and bend the body and whatever. Take it from me, guys. You know what you're doing. You're not going to do any damage. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. So let's get underneath this car and see what we got to do. All right, guys. So right about now, you're probably laying underneath a limo. Tires off. Jack stands holding it up, safety glasses on, and wondering why you didn't just stay in school and listen to your parents. Whatever. All right, let's get this shit done. So, you're gonna have to make sure this thing's in neutral. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you've got jack stands holding this thing up. I like to have the jack here as well. Safety is number one. Don't let me see any comments about you can't jack a limo up like that. You're going to break it. Yeah, I know. No, I'm not. All right. So, first thing you're going to want to do, grab yourself a little chalk marker here. And you've got to mark this drive shaft, okay? This already has a mark on it because <laughs> this is not the first time I've replaced this. So, but I'm just going to darken this mark just to make sure it's still there. What you want to do is mark the drive shaft, and then you want to mark the differential where it actually bolts up to the differential this way you make absolute sure that this drive shaft goes right back in the exact same spot that you took it off you're going to figure this is a balanced rotating assembly and if you put it back in a different spot there's a very strong possibility you could pick up a vibration so all of your work will be for nothing all right so i've got that marked now we've got to take out these bolts that go all the way around and then we can pull this whole thing down swap it out for our new one. Now, you will notice on the new one, you've got these big washers that stick out. I remember right, the factory one didn't have those. This is an improvement that Dorman made on the original design. So, <coughs> this vehicle already has this one in it, because I had replaced it not too long ago, probably about two, three years ago. So, by looking at what I'm seeing here, just to refresh my own memory, this thing goes in with these big fat washers, facing towards the front of the vehicle. That's going to be very important to make sure you put these in the right way or you will, once again, pick up a vibration or a problem. All right, so let's take this bad boy apart. washers you're gonna need these to go back on and make sure you keep track of these bolts because there are different lengths the ones that go through the drive shaft itself are a different length than the ones that actually bolt it to the differential so I'm gonna do all the bolts that are on the drive shaft first 
so that I can keep them all together. And then I'll come back around after the drive shaft gets dropped, and I'll actually take the coupler off of the differential. So all of our bolts are out of there now. Now let's pop the drive shaft off. There we go. You should be able to. The drive shaft will collapse. Just spin the camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. This is facing forward now. You have a collapsible joint right there in this drive shaft. So as long as you've been greasing it like you should, that should move in and out very easily and that should allow you to just take this drive shaft and push it and collapse that joint just enough to drop the drive shaft down and get it out of your way. I like to use a little pry bar and there we go. There's our drive shaft. So now you can see the rubber coupling right here is still bolted to the differential. Alright? So now we've got just three bolts to take that off. And reverse the process and we're done. This is super easy. You guys can do this in your, in your driveway if you really had to. Well, this is going to use the same size tools that we used on the other side. If you've never done this to this car before, you know it's going to take a little bit more effort to get this thing off. But if it's been done, you know you should be able to just get in here with this pry bar and wiggle this thing right out without any issues. There we go, and it pops right out, and that's it. All right, let's start putting this thing back together. So I grabbed just a little screwdriver here with a straight edge on it. It's going to clean out any debris that's in here that could give me any problems. Especially you guys up north, you might have to get in there with some fine emery cloth, a little bit of sandpaper. Let's get any of that rust or corrosion out of there. All right, so we're looking good. Now we can get started on putting the new one in. So now if you were paying attention in the beginning, like I told you, here's our new one. You can see the difference. See these big, thick, heavy washers? Make sure those face forward. Now on the opposite side, you've got a washer here as well, but it doesn't stick out as far. Now make sure that those washers go inside of those little holes on your differential flange. So make sure you line this up properly. And there you go. You just pop right in and you can put your bolts back in. Just put it back together the exact same way you took it apart. Now if there's one thing that I always do, I don't like to tighten bolts until 
They're all in. At least started by him. critical moment where we line up this drive shaft again. The differential's been turned quite a few times. Now if you remember that mark that we put on the drive shaft and the differential with our little uh, chalk marker, this is where that comes in handy. So I'm going to spin this around until I see my mark. Okay, so I know you guys can't see it in the camera, but my mark is right here that I made with my little chalk marker. Okay, so now I've got the same mark on the drive shaft. We're going to make sure that we line these back up perfectly. And be careful while you're under here too. We got a plastic gas tank right here, so put a hole in that thing. Yeah, you're gonna really wish your ass stayed in school. So I'm gonna collapse the drive shaft again. I should be able to just pry this back a little bit, give it a little bit of room. There we go. Now we're looking for our mark here. And our mark here. And there you go. And you just pull your drive shaft back into place. All right. Then we're just going to put those other three bolts back in, tighten it up, and we're done. So there you have it, one fully installed new drive shaft coupler. I did go around one more time just to double check the bolts were all nice and tight. So you guys should be able to do this in, uh, in less than an hour if you really know what you're doing. No need to pay somebody to do this, you can do it at home. So now you can see the marks that I made there and the other mark that I made right there. So you can see how I've got my yellow marks lined up. That's to make sure that your drive shaft goes back in the same position. And if you're not comfortable with some of this stuff, taking these things apart, and you're not sure on how to put them back together, um, take pictures of it before you take it apart. You know, that way you can refer back to it to make sure that you've got your alignment correct and you've got your bolts in the right place. So that's it for that guy. So here is the old drive shaft coupler. I want to show you why I replaced it. You can see these cracks around here, here, this has got quite a few cracks in it. And this one is only probably about three years old, but you know, it is in a 6,500 pound limo that's almost, you know, 30 feet long. So it's pretty normal for these things to take a beating. Very common problem. It's so easy to replace, you guys shouldn't have any problems doing this on your own. Again, Mike at the Limo Garage, thanks for watching. I hope this tip helped out. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to put a message down below, see if I can help you out. Thanks for watching, see you guys next time.